in this lesson we will learn about chapter 6 inventory management so after this uh, lessons I expect all of you will understand what is inventory how many type of inventory we have and why do we have to keep inventory how important it is and also what kind of method for us to control inventory and uh, the last one is what is vendor managed inventory so to achieve those learning expectation we will go through four main part and i will separate it into uh, two lessons and first we will see the inventory system second is we will learn a methodology to calculate the economics order quantity that is EOQ and the next part is the replenishment policies that it includes Q system and P system and finally is vendor managed inventory VMI so let's go to the first part what is inventory so inventory is stock of items kept to meet the future demand and to understand the inventory level maybe you can uh, think of the faucet who are which pour out the water and a bucket a bucket and the demand rate so the inventory level is the gap between the supply and the demand okay so how many water have in the bucket that one we consider as a inventory level so i let me give you an example i buy 50 products from supplier like at first I don't have anything I am a startup and I want to open a new store and I doesn't have I don't have anything yet and I buy 50 products from the supplier and this month I can sell 30 products so I have 20 left right for the first month so this 20 will become the inventory for the next month Here is a figure for inventory profile. So you can see uh, they have a cycle like this. And this point is when we our inventory is zero. It means we have nothing on hand. Then we order a quantity equal to Q. So when we receive the order, we will have Q products, right? Q items. And here we have euro items. So euro is the minimum inventory and Q is the maximum inventory we have. So we can calculate the average inventory on hand is will equal to euro multiply, uh, sorry, plus Q divide by two and we will have Q divided by 2 inventory and one cycle from euro to another one we call it one stock cycle and how many type of inventory we consider so normally we will separate it in three main forms the first one is raw material the second one is work in process inventory in process inventory and the last one is finished products finished product inventory okay so let me give you an example uh, I want to make a table I want to make in uh, a table so table will be the finish inventory finished product inventory finished goods is the one available ready to deliver to the customer and user right 
and raw material is maybe wood, steel, or iron. Okay, then up the wood, they will make legs or the tops of the tables, and after that, they will assembly those components to be a finished products. So remember that we have three forms raw materials inventory, work in process inventory and finished products inventory. Uh, we still consider one more type of inventory that is uh, transfer products so for example you already finished the table and it's on the truck to deliver it to the customer that is another type of inventory okay and why we have to keep inventory so the obje objective of inventory management is to strive a balance between inventory investment and customer service because our if we don't keep inventory the probability of our stock will increase right so it means we will lose we are the customer service will decrease so the objective of inventory management is to balance the inventory investment and the customer service and why we should hold the inventory so it's because of four main reasons the first one is the lead time so earlier we know that we have three main types of inventory, right? So let's say uh, when I want to make the table, I need four legs and one top. So for example, uh, the lead time of the legs is two weeks and the top is four weeks so after we receive the leg we need to wait another two weeks for the top to, uh, to be arrived so we need to wait double time but if we have the uh, top in warehouse in inventory so we can reduce the time to complete the table right so since the material the components the products they have different lead times so the purpose of inventory is to uh, that's why we need to hold inventory so that we can uh, solve the different lead time problem the second one is uncertainty so we cannot uh, focus exactly exact the demand right we always focus the demand but it's not always correct focus the demand for example recently the virus corona uh, appear due to the virus corona appearance the demand for mask and hand sanitizer increase like crazy increase sharply so if we keep the mask in inventory we can reduce the probability of our stock right so another purpose of keeping the inventory is to uh, face with the uncertainty and the demand and another one another reason is because of the economy of skills 
So for example, you have uh, when you order 10,000 product at the same time and you only pr order 1,000 product at one time. So when you hold the inventory, when you buy 10,000 product at the same time, maybe you will get the quantity discount when you order okay so they want to uh, take advantage of the quantity account so when you buy 10,000 maybe per the price is two dollars but when you order one thousand maybe the price is six dollar for example so when you order more you can get more profit like right? you can reduce the price but for manufacturing, for factory, what is economies of scale? So when you do, you do mass production, you can reduce the fixed cost, the cost of producing. So that is why they want to take the advantage of economies of scale. And the last reason, the last cost is short product life cycle. So let me... Uh, give you an example maybe christmas tree so christmas tree only can be sold during christmas and christmas is only like maximum is like one month and if they don't keep inventory to sell to satisfy the demand during the christmas uh, period they will uh, reduce they, their profit will or their revenue will be decreased because they cannot satisfy all the demand and so that they have they have to keep more inventory for the short product life cycle or the seasonal seasonal products because it only can be sold in a specific season okay Okay, so how to category, how to classify different inventory, like which one we should keep more, which one, which product we should keep less inventory. So we use the ABC analysis. So what is ABC analysis? It's based on the Pareto concept, 80-20 rule. Do you know, uh, have you ever heard about this rule before? So it's like 80% uh, percent of the money in the world will belong to 20% of people. Mm -hmm. I think everyone heard about it before. So the same as keeping inventory, we also use the ABC analysis and this rule. So we will classify products as A level, B level, and C level. To cast this example, we can uh, see this company have 10 items. And the first column is the annual usage in unit. So like for the first item, they use uh, 5,000 units per year and the unit cost and the total uh, money they use for that products. And after that, we can see the percentage, calculate the percentage of the total uh, dollar usage by, for example, here, how can you calculate? You just use uh, this one, 5,000. 7,500 divided by uh, the total so you can have the percentage so look at this percentage what is your conclusion you can see what they focus more they spend the most is here the item 3 and item 6 so if we separate it we can the the important one we will have 
classify A is the most important, so the item 3 and 6. And after that, we can see 6.9, right? So we can hear 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can put they in a rank. Uh, the first important, so I can put uh, the A level is three and six. How about B? We can put item nine. Item 2 and item 4 and C can be the rest of the, the item. So here you can see the Pareto chart and here is the classification A, B and C. Okay, so uh, let's do this example for me. A small store has 10 categories of products with the following cost and annual demand. So do um, ABC analysis for this item and if the resource for inventory control are limited which items should gi be given the least attention. So spend a few minutes to solve this problem for me. Okay, so how can we do it? We just try to calculate the total cost. For example, here I will have 20 multiplied by 2.5, right? So we will have 20 multiplied by 2.5. So I have fifty dollars, and here is five hundred. Here four hundred. Here is th three thousand three hundred. One hundred fifty, three hundred, fifty, one hundred. 150. So based on this one, you can separate them in A, B, C analysis, right? So of course, this one is the first place. The second one will be 500 and three, two, uh, 400, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can have A is the item 1, B I will put for item 2, item 3, and item 4, okay? And C I will put Okay, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah. This item, follow this one, okay? But this, for example, five will be P5. Uh, 9 will be PO the products so I here I just write the range of this one from this one okay here this is the ranked subject to those uh, products so 
when the resource for inventory are unlimited we can just keep everything because we don't have any limitation but what will happen if we only have limited warehouse or limited resource for inventory control we have to focus on the most important one that is classification a and b and for c we will uh, have less attention so here which item should be given the least attention that we have to look at the classification C first and we will see for example uh, this item this three item that is item P1 P7 and PO so if we have to choose which one we need to give given the least attention we have to choose this one the item from classification C and we know that what is our pri priority the item A in the items in classification A will be the first priority then the second is the items in classification B okay so why we have to do ABC analysis so we can know which item we should put more attention and which one we should put less attention okay and you know that when you order a lot so it means you will have more inventory right and when you have more inventory the out of stock will decrease but the inventory cost will increase or holding cost will increase however if you order a little you the out of stock probability will increase and you might lose your customer demand will lose but you can uh, reduce the inventory cost right so the question proposed is how much how many products we should order because we don't want to order a lot we also don't want to order too little so how much is enough so we want we want we want to compromise them so the question is how much to order and when we should order when we should place an order and how much safety stock we should keep so that we can uh, achieve the desired level of product availability okay so to solve those questions we will look at the model eoq model that is economic order quantity so what is order economic order quantity so look at the name you know is order quantity is a number right a number that we should order what is economic economics is related to money so it means we want to choose a number that the number of product we should order to minimize the cost so can achieve the economics okay so that is the main purpose of eoq that is determine a number an order number so that we can achieve the economics that is minimize the total cost so let's look at the notation we have okay we can calculate the total cost the total cost will equal to the holding cost plus all the cost and plus the purchasing cost <coughs> purchasing cost is the cost 
the money we have to pay for the products right and this is easy is will equal to the unit cost multiplied by the demand because the demand is the total uh, products we have to buy okay and holding cost what is holding cost so let's say here is supplier here is supplier then deliver to a uh, manufacturer factory so let's say the holding cost is the cost when you receive when you uh, they deliver the good the goods and when you receive the goods and store it in the warehouse and that is called holding cost the cost to keep the products in your place okay so holding costs will uh, have several costs like cost of capital cost of uh, like spoilage cost because when you keep uh, the inventory maybe for a long term the product will be spoiled or broken so we have to pay for those risky cost or handling costs when you receive or store the products and also rent uh, the place to put your inventory and also you have to hire label to uh, take care of your inventory right so here I list out several costs for inventory cost but the most important the biggest cost in inventory holding cost that is the cost of capital what does it mean it means uh, this money you you spend this money to buy inventory then instead of buying the inventory and keeping inventory you have to invest or you can do another thing so that you can earn more money so that is the the cost of in, uh, capital and the second cost that is the cost for uh, renting a warehouse for receiving and storage co uh, products how about uh, and for the holding cost we will have the unit holding cost multiplied by the total quantity that we keep in warehouse in inventory and it's equal to the average inventory that is q divided by 2 Q is the auto quantity okay and the next cost is the order cost order cost is the cost of placing a new order so when you click to make the new order you have to pay for ordering cost so the ordering cost will have like uh, placing order costs, transportation costs, receiving costs and other costs and the most the biggest cost here is the transportation cost delivery cost and the loading and unloading products unloading products so those are the biggest cost in ordering cost so ordering cost will have a unit order cost s multiplied by the number we order and the number we order will equal to the demand divided by the order quantity let me give you an example here so that you will understand more uh, let's say the demand is 1000 so it means we have to order 1000 however one time we only order 100 so how many times we need to order we need to make order 10 times right so this 10 will multiply with the unit ordering cost then we will have the order cost so let me uh, rewrite it the total cost function the total cost is equal to holding cost plus ordering cost 
and plus the purchase cost, right? And as we can see here, if Q increase, keep if Q increase, the holding cost will Q increase. holding costs will increase, right? Because we have more inventory. And Q increase the order cost, ordering cost will decrease. Okay? It's easy to understand if the holding cost increase means we have to keep more inventory in the warehouse, so it means we have to pay more for the holding cost. But if we order more, it means we will make the number of the order we make will be smaller. So it means the ordering cost will be smaller. And we can see here the holding cost increase, the relationship between holding cost and the order quantity. Order quantity increase, the holding cost will increase, and ordering cost. Uh, order quantity increase the ordering cost will decrease so we will have the total cost curve like this and here as this point we can have this is Q star and this is the point the optimal order quantity that have us achieve the minimum total cost okay so how can we determine this q star so let's take the first derivative of the total cost to q so we have ddc derivative to q the, take the first de de derivative of total cost subject to Q. We will have H multiply the Q. The first derivative, do you still rem remember? Plus S D and multiply by Q, right? From here to here. And take the first derivative and plus DC takes the first der derivative. So here, when we derivative to Q, we what we have left is H divided by 2. If you already forgot this one, uh, please go back the high school book, the mathematics book, how to take the first derivative. And here what we have is S D multiply by negative one Q star or Q square. And this one is equal to zero because it doesn't include Q. Then we will have is equal to H divided by two minus S D divided by Q star. And let the first derivative of total cost subject to Q equal to zero. So we have H divided by two minus S D Q star uh, Q square equal to zero. So we have Q square equal to two S D divided by H, and we have. Q star will equal to the square root of 2SD divided by H. So this is how we calculate the optimal order quantity using the EOQ model. Okay. So EOQ model also have some assumption. 
So assumption of ELQ model is, uh, let me write it here. Yeah, so here is uh, how you calculate the Q star. First one is a demand is um, demand is known. Demand is known, continuous and constant over time. And we don't consider the stock out in this case. And we assume that all the order is received in one batch. Okay. And the lead time is fixed as well. That is uh, assumption of ELQ. So let's take this example. <coughs> a store S have observed a stable monthly demand. So they have a stable monthly demand for each line of mobile phone iPhone of 100 pieces per month. And the store incurs a fixed cost of $2,000 every time it's placed an order for additional iPhones and the store pays $200 per iPhone the store's out-of-pocket cost of storing an iPhone for a year are about 10% and the opportunity cost of capital is 15% what other side do you recommend for the S store? So how can we calculate the Q star or the sign, the order quantity? So you, what we have, we have the demand is, we have the demand it is equal to 100 pieces per month, right? Per month. So we, but, We see the cost for storing iPhone is a year. The holding cost here, they calculate it as year. So I will uh, convert the demand to the year. So it's equal to 12 multiplied by 100. So I will have 1,200 pieces per year. Okay and what we have we have the ordering cost ordering cost is equal to 2000 right per order and the holding cost the holding cost is is 10% uh, for 10% of the price and the opportunity cost of the capital is 15 so we have holding cost is equal to 10% plus 15% for the opportunity opportunity cost multiply by 200 right so it will equal to $50 $50 per pieces and per year so how can we calculate Q? It's easy already. Q star will equal to 2ds uh, divided by h, take the square root. So we will have 2 multiplied by 1200 multiplied by uh, 2000 and divide by 50. And we take the square root, so we will have uh, is equal to 309.8. So we will round out for the order quantity. So the optimal order quantity will equal to 310. Okay, so we can solve this problem. So now how can we calculate like how, when they should order? We already solved the first question, how much to order, right? So the second question is when. 
so we can calculate how many times how many times they will order per year so n is equal to the demand multiplied by the Q star so we have demand is 1200 divided by 310 so we will order 3.9 order per year so how many in one year they will order 3.9 times so how long they will order one time so t is equal to 1 divided by n and it will equal to 1 divided by 3.9 and I want to calculate it uh, per day so I multiply by 365 and I will have 94 days so every 94 days I will make one order okay so what we can conclude here every 94 days the store will make one order with the quantity is 310 uh, items per time and they will order 3.9 times per year and here we can calculate the total cost it's easy you just uh, need to S is the fixed cost okay for ordering cost so here is the ordering cost and here is holding cost if you can uh, you want to calculate the purchasing cost is okay but if you don't include it's also fine so here we can calculate the total cost is equal to ordering cost plus holding cost and you can uh, plus the purchase cost as well so purchase cost is the $200 because they have to pay $200 per iPhone, right? Multiply by the demand. That is $1,200. Okay? So you can plus purchase, purchasing cost here. Okay. So let's go to the next example. And please do it by yourself for this example. The yarn tree chart by stationery for pen motors. The demand for printed forms is constant at 20 boxes a month. Each box of forms cost $50. The cost of processing an order and arranging delivery is $60 and holding cost is nine, uh, $18 a box a year so what is the economic order quantity what is EOQ cycle length and cost so uh, when you calculate the EOQ or the optimal order quantity please uh, pay attention to the time like the period of time you have to convert all the number or the value into the same period of time like month or year or week or day okay so uh, please spend some time to solve this uh, example for me okay so what we have here we have the demand is Twenty boxes per month, and it's constant; like it will not change. 
and the price of the cost of Xbox is fifty five uh for sorry fifty dollars. And ordering cost is sixty dollars. Holding cost is eighteen dollars per per year. So you can see here the time unit is different so you have to convert it into the same period of time so okay based on this uh, information please do this uh, example by yourself and I already uh, give you the, to the final number here so if you cannot calculate those uh, number your result is different from this number try to calculate it again and uh, feel free to ask me if you cannot figure it out by yourself okay so what we learn from EOQ first let's go back to the uh, optimal order quantity Q star that is equal to 2 ds divided by h right take the square root so you can see if the fixed cost reduce if s reduce what will happen we will tend to order in smaller batch right q star will reduce so the insights from eoq formula is the fixed cost reduce the fixed cost reduction will lead to smaller orders or batches okay it's easy to to see it here and another example are uh, let's say you are a store manager it's just like a pop and mom pop and mom shop uh, then let's say this week there are 10 orders let's say you you sell coke and this week you, you sell 10 coke but uh, let's say last week you sell 10 cokes and this week one person come and order 40 cokes so how many cokes will you order from the supplier you think how many will you order 10 or 40 how many cokes should you order and put it in inventory so I guess most of you will choose to order 40 codes but that is only the mindset of who haven't learned the inventory if you already learn inventory and you understand the insights of EOQ you will not choose 40 because we can see look at this formula again if the sale is mean the demand increase four times how many times the Q star will increase? Square root of 4 is 2 times, right? So if the demand increase 4 times, we only increase the order quantity 2 times. So in this case, we only order 20, okay? So after learning this, your mindset about inventory and order will be different. Okay, so it will help you have an, another like more effective inventory management. And another insight is from another lesson we can learn from EOQ formula is about centralization of inventory. So, for example, we have four size hospital, and they have four different warehouse.
but now they centralization their inventory and they just combine them keep inventory together the, the total inventory will cut in half so for example the holding cost decrease four times so Q will uh, sorry this holding cost increase four times then Q star will decrease two two times so if they try to pull their inventory put in one they try to centralize the inventory they can cut the inventory into half so in test of four they only need to have two, two warehouse so we will get more benefit okay And how many are way we can replenish our inventory? We will have two policies to replen uh, replenish our inventory. The first one is continuous review and the second one is periodic review. What is continuous review? Continuous review is the order fixed quantity are uh, when the total inventory drop below the reorder point so for example when the inventory drop under 20 items i have a light like this and is it drop the inventory drop below the 20 items the company will make the new order and order with the same quantity maybe one let's say 100 items periodic review is you order you will review you will replenish the product after a fixed period of time it's like every two months every two months you will uh, replenish your inventory and you will have you will have a level for example the maximum level is 100 items and from this point the January you have 20 left 20 items left you need to refill 80 but for example two months later that is april and the inventory left is 40 so you only need to refill 60. so the number you order every time will be different but you will replenish, uh, replenish after a fixed period of time that is the difference between continuous review and periodic review and in the next lessons, I will uh, teach you more detail and teach you how to uh, use different replenish policies, what is a different, uh, when you we, we calculate the safety stock or the formula in continuous review and periodic review.